outdoors we're out here in New Brockton again I know we seem to be out here a lot but it's just so it's so beautiful out here uh, we're on the, the uh, property of Ken and Ralph Parrish that's Gail's cousins and this property they use to grow pine trees and uh, these pine trees that you see behind me and, and all around me they've probably been here for 15 or 20 years or so and they've got another 10 years to go before they're actually uh, big enough to harvest. But in our ride this morning, as we ride through here to just check on the property, I just located a very, very small white flower that I have never seen before. It is the almost two thirds of the month of November have already gone by and these flowers are just now starting to bloom. So hey, come with me and check them out. You can see that they, they actually flower from these, uh, this bunch of, uh, it's, it's like ground cover. They've got uh, pointy leaves. This is a, a bud of one of them. They've got thorns. And this is the flower. It's very petite. It's four petals. And it is just a pretty, pretty white flower. Black powder. We're down here at B-Sox property. Every time I come down here, I like to bring the, the horsies an apple. And this is, I like to introduce you to this is Bishaw. Bishaw is kind of the workhorse. He is just so gentle that he, uh, everybody rides him when they need uh, some kind of competition. Hey, wait. Trying to chew with <laughs> And this, of course, is Wildfire. You've seen him in my videos. He is funny to, to be around. He loves to run, he loves to jump, he loves to play. And only certain people can ride wildfire. He's got a kind of got a mind of his own. But Mary Ann and Timmy and they can they can ride him, and he likes being ridden by them. Wildfire has is, is been in a lot of competition. Somebody, what do you got to say? Anything? And Bishaw, he's he's been around a while, and he now uh, competes with the grandkids. in shooting competitions. That's his latest task. And he's he is an excellent horse. You can shoot off his back, you can shoot over his over his back and he doesn't flinch, he doesn't run. He's a good old boy. And I love coming down here and spending time with the with the horses. They're well taken care of. Marianne of course she's having her baby here shortly and we go to go into her uh, baby shower tonight but uh, she loves her horses and she's excellent with them now no you can't ride it <laughs> aren't you glad that I ride the four-wheeler instead of ride trying to ride you <laughs> he's just such a great little guy This is a wildfire. They write songs about horses like this. It's 
still got a little bit of apple between your teeth. Hmm? He kind of heads up and protects all the other horses here in the on the property. He's a good boy. Very good boy. Right, Bisha? Right, Bisha? Alright, we'll see you later. You leaving? This is Bisha. Bisha is a good boy. Very good boy. Very gentle. He is just a fantastic horse. You've been around a while. Right? You want to take care? Okay, this is this is uh Malfire taking video of B Shaw. Yeah. You have anything to say about that? Hmm? You see? You see B Shaw on that? Do you? You wanna see? You wanna see Wildfire? Look. There's a wildfire. You can see wildfire in there. See? Look over there. Oh, poor Axe. He gets his stomach upset every time he eats an apple. Yeah. Poor baby. He's over. He goes to his stall after an apple and he sits in there and burps. <laughs> He's old. He must be real old. I don't know him too much about that horse. But I do know a lot about wildfire and b -shawl. Yeah. They are fantastic horses. Okay, we'll let you guys get back to what the horsies do. And thank you for spending time with me. I do surely do enjoy it. I do, I do, I do. God bless you. God bless you, baby. Yeah. Okay. See you later. This is horse number three. I think the same as Alec. Uh, if you notice Alec's left eye, it's discolored. And it's there's a good likelihood that he may be blind in that eye. See it. You can tell that he uh, he's an older horse, and Marianne adopted this horse. He had no place else to go. That's how great these and Christian these people are. Um, it's not easy taking care of horses nowadays, especially out here. Uh, they've got no water source. Water has to be hand carried. Hey, that's a wildfire, and he's eating my bag. <laughs> and uh, it has to be hand carried in there is grass here but I mean and when the, there's a drought it doesn't grow and these horses have to be fed with hay and so forth and that has to be carried in but God bless them Timmy and Marianne and Rick and Erlene and the boys, they pitch in and they all help and uh, make it happen. God bless them all. Just found another tree stand, and it's that'd be very uncomfortable to spend any time sitting there. But uh, it looks like somebody will be. There's only one problem with it, and I and I'm not a hunter, but you know I do have military experience. Down this hill, it is possible that. There is a, a tent, remember that tent uh, hide that I showed you? It's right down there. It's just down through these trees. Now a bullet will travel through leaves without a problem. Small trees. Back here in a thicket. And uh, I'm just driving around and look what I find. Aren't they pretty? Just a few of them. Buried nestled back here, back in the thicket. God still has a few little yellow flowers blooming here at the end of November. This is a critter hole. You can see the uh, sand that's out in front of it. By the shape of it, I would say that it is a uh, gopher tortoise. You can see that this cotton this year was very patchy. Here is uh, plants that have tons of balls on them, but very little cotton was produced from them. They just did not have enough time to grow. And we've had frost and, and so forth, and leaves and the plants have died. And uh, that's just not going to happen this year for them. This is, this is what the cotton is supposed to turn into to be productive for the 
farmer. But when it turns into just be a ball, that doesn't help him at all. You can see this ball, and you can see how it's made. You can see that there's serrations in it where it's supposed to dry out and open up. Well, this one never did. And it should look like this. And then look like this. And then finally look like that. We're going to learn more about cotton uh, next week. So look forward to that program. Uh, we're going to head to the Coffee County uh, Cotton Gin. And Cotton Gin is the next step in the cotton production line uh, after this is harvested and, and put into the bales. I've learned a lot just talking to the guys over there. Different kinds of cotton and, and all kinds of things that I didn't know. And I look forward to spending some time over there next week. And I hope you'll enjoy the show and just look for it. I can't tell you exactly when it's going to be, but uh, just check back and and it'll be it'll be good. Let's take a look at what uh, what is in the, the ball before it breaks open. You can see that the fibers, the cotton, is in there. Now I don't think that cotton is any good. It, I mean, it might be. I don't know. It just hasn't completely. There's the seed right there. Now, is it possible that they can get cotton from the? It's see, you can see that the it's separated into four different, four or more. Looks like it's quarters, and they're separated by a small cellulose type covering. Yeah, there's three, six. There's six in a cotton ball. It shows six in the cotton ball. Now this one broke into five. One, two, three, four, five. This one broke into four. Some of this cotton may be good. I mean, this one's cracking open. So it's probably ready to go. But, you know, when these things are very sharp, very, very sharp, I mean, look at how pointed that is and it's hard. Well, this is the inside of a cotton ball. Now if there had been, been a boll weevil in this cotton what they would have done is they would have burrowed through the outside and have, they would have eaten this white product that was on the inside. And laid eggs in it and all that stuff. So but there isn't any boll weevils are pretty much in check here and, in the new rock. season you know and I have not seen a single quail not one either they're few and far between or they're uh, hiding real well and a few years ago you just couldn't go anywhere without seeing quail it's such a shame they're such beautiful birds Thank you.